And if you see something funny in the Bible, laugh. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Amarachi Nadoze and I'm a faith-based content creator here on YouTube. And this is Talks with Chi. Talks with Chi is under for his daughter's podcast on Spotify and Apple. So if you're listening in from those platforms, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to thank God for what he is doing in each and every one of your lives. Even when you don't see it, God is working. Even when you don't feel it, God is working. Even when things don't look like they're working, God is working because God sees the full scope of everything. It's not just the now. It's not just the yesterday or the tomorrow. God sees the full scope of everything. And that's why we can trust in him. And that's why we need his voice, especially during this time. We need the voice of God. We need to hear his voice for ourselves because his voice will take us where we need to go in life. His voice dispels every confusion. His voice brings peace. His voice is life. His voice is a breath of fresh air. His voice is love. His voice grounds you. And that just low-key reminded me of a counseling technique. It's called grounding. And that can be done by a square breathe and a box breathe in. And that is when you just go silent and you tune in with your body. You can focus on your breathing, counting. You breathe in, you breathe out, and that's supposed to just calm your nerves and focus you in the present. Interestingly, my sister shared with me this fun fact that the name of God, Yahweh, is literally, Yah is supposed to be like, you're breathing in in ways like you're breathing out breath. So every time you breathe in and breathe out, you're breathing Yahweh every time. So that means God is the very air that you breathe. Man, let's pray before we get into this topic. Lord, thank you so much for right now this moment thank you god that you are intentional you're a god that is still speaking a god who is not limited by time or space you are incredible lord you're a wonderful lord i thank you and i bless you holy spirit i invite your presence right now and i pray oh god that everybody who's listening will be blessed I pray, oh God, that you will speak to everyone individually, oh God, on what you want them to just um, learn or hear, oh God. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So a little bit of a backstory. I feel like I always do a backstory, but here we go. My friend invited me and a couple of our other friends that used to be on LU Praise to come and lead worship at the church he's a worship director of. While on that journey, I decided that I think I was starting the journey and I didn't want to listen to music. My music was already playing um, on Spotify. I didn't want to listen to music. So I went to go pause my music. And um, when I went to go pause it, Spotify let me know that I have audiobooks. And I was like, huh, okay. Like, I don't want to listen to music. So let me see what this audiobook is about. So I clicked on the audiobook and I was just scrolling. And lo and behold, I see Stephanie E.K.'s book that I've been wanting called The Power of Dreams, something like that. Um, and I was like, "Ooh, I'm going to listen to this on this drive. And so I was driving and I was listening and she was talking just about just different ways that God speaks to us. And then she focused on dreams. But she said this one part, she referenced Samuel in the Bible when he heard his name, Samuel. And he thought it was Eli, he thought it was Eli calling him. And after a couple of times, Eli was sensitive that, oh, no, Samuel is not hearing me. He's hearing God. So Eli taught Samuel how to hear the voice of God at that age. And so it sparked a memory. I remember when I was little, like I was in our bunk bed, um, me and my siblings. And I remember the words come in my mind, Rabba Shekina, Rabba Shekina. That's how it sounded in my mind, Rabba Shekina. And it just kept repeating. And I was low-key scared. I was like, what is this? Is this tongues? Like, what is this? And I talked to my mom about it. We weren't sure. I believe I talked to my mom about it. But I had looked it up at one point in time. I don't know what it was. I just, like, I could not find what this meant. And I was like, what was that voice in my head? Rabbi Shekinah. Rabbi Shekinah. So um, it came back to me while I was driving. And then I looked it up on Google. I was like, Rabbi Shekinah. What came up was the word Shekinah. The Hebrew root is to dwell. And it said that Shekinah means like the dwelling presence of God. The presence of God made manifest. Something like that. And then I was like, hmm, interesting. 
And then I was like, what, what is rabbi? Is it rabbi? Is it two Bs? And so like after, I just felt like just put one B. So I put rabbi and I looked it up. I believe it's either Hebrew or Greek, but it means great, like great grandfather. I scrolled a little bit, a little more and I saw that it also meant God. So translated like, I don't know, the, the manifest presence of God, like God. And I was just like, wait a minute. I was like, Lord, were you speaking to me? When I was younger, and I didn't know that it was you, and it just dawned on me that, like, even when we're not conscious of God, He's still speaking to us, and God introduces Himself to us sometimes before we know Him, just like He did Samuel when He called Samuel's name. But Samuel was not familiar with the voice of God yet, but God called out to Samuel. And just like how God created Adam and initiated this relationship with Adam. This is a side note, but another thing that added to what the Holy Spirit taught me is that God always initiates his will first. You will never be confused when it is God's will. He will, he will tell you. Because God is always clear from the beginning. He was always clear about his motives, his plans, his love. He was always clear about what his plan was. Even after the fall of man, God was always clear. And um, when it comes to hearing God's voice, there's different ways that we hear his voice. The first, most primary, most crucial way we hear God's voice is through his word. And I know people say this all the time, read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. But literally, the basis of hearing God's voice is opening the word of God and reading it. But it's not just to just open it and read it like it's just some book you just picked up the shelf and you're just going to read it. When you read the Bible, I urge you to approach it like you're going into a conversation. You're going into a conversation with someone that is really close to you and knows you intimately how would you approach that conversation because see god created relationships these relationships we have today whether it's marriage friendships family god created relationships because he is the founder of everything ultimately so when we look at how we approach our relationships the ones that are really dear to us it's kind of the same thing with god because he created it right so when we read the bible we have to approach it like we're having a conversation with god and um I had to learn this as well, because if the Bible is not approached that way, we can kind of fall into this thing of like legalism, just reading the word and then getting frustrated. Like, I'm not hearing anything back. Um, And it's not a race. Like, it's not a race. This thing, this Bible is packed. Like, you can read one scripture and then the Holy Spirit will reveal like several things to you in different times. So when you open the Bible, you got to first ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, speak to me. As I read. And why is it the Holy Spirit? Because it says that when Jesus died, he left the Holy Spirit to teach us all things. And there's another scripture that says, The Spirit of God knows the mind of God. So the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. So when the Holy Spirit reveals things to you, he's revealing to you the mind of God. And so that's why when we open the scripture, we have to invite the Holy Spirit into it. And if you see something funny in the Bible, laugh. Like if you think it's funny, I'd be like, like lord why do you be talking like that or why did you do this or what does this mean you know or if you're feeling conviction like oh i'm feeling convicted what does this mean lord like you got to engage like that and have faith that the lord is is hearing you and he will talk back to you so the first and primary way to hear god's voice is by reading his word because everything else stems out from it another way we hear the voice of god is through a knowing um and a knowing is kind of like like how it sounds you just know you just know that this is it or some people will say i have a gut feeling that this is what this is going to happen or i have a gut feeling that this is right i have a gut feeling that this is wrong so god speaks to us through a knowing and um you know there's moments where i've been looking for stuff 
and I feel like I've I've never really lost anything because I'll be like, Holy Spirit, like help me. Where did I put this thing? Or where 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 did I put this thing? Um, there was a moment when I was um traveling back from Nigeria and I had to go to the airport. I could not find my passport. But I'm like, how can I not find my passport? I know this is where it is, but I kept checking that same place and it was not there. And I just kept having this knowing, like I know my passport is in here. Like I kept checking everywhere else, but it's just this knowing I had like your passport is exactly where you're looking. And finally, I checked again and I looked at a different part of, you know, the bag I was checking and it was right there. And I was like, the Holy Spirit was telling me my passport was in there, but I could not see it. So like through a knowing in lieu of that, he also speaks to us like a voice in our mind. And that voice in your mind, it will sound familiar. You know, it's not your voice. And you know it's not the enemy's voice because God's voice cannot be different from God's nature. He's peaceful. He's kind. So when you hear God's voice, it should be followed with a, with a sense of like peace. And if you're not sure, that's when you pray and say, Holy Spirit, help me to decipher whose voice this is. And that's why I said you got to open your word. And you can also ask for a confirmation. If you're really not sure, Lord, is this really your voice? Can you confirm it to me? And when he's confirming it to you, you will know that he's confirming it. Like the Holy Spirit will just give you that light bulb, like, aha. And it's just going to resonate with you because God is so intentional and he knows how to speak to you in a way that you will know it's him. And even when we converse with him reading the Bible, he will speak to us in our mind as well. God also speaks audibly. Um, it does happen where you, you can hear the voice of God audibly. That hasn't happened to me before. But I know um, I've heard that God has spoken to people audibly. And there's like a story in the Bible, I believe, of the man, the man Balaam of Balaam, that God literally opened his donkey's mouth to speak to him. So God will speak to you audibly. And also like in, in line with that, there's sometimes you will have conversations with people and something that person will say it just hits you differently. You know that that's the Lord speaking through that person to you. This past week, I was having a hard day at work and I just went for a walk and I was praying in my mind. I was just like, Lord, just help me. I'm tired and, you know, I was upset. So I was going down the stairs and someone, you know, was like, excuse me. I was like, yes. And then the person was like, I like your cup. And I was like, hmm, people tell me they like my cup. Let me show you my cup for reference. But this is my cup. And he was like, I like your cup. And that just hit me differently. And I looked at my cup and it says fruit of the spirit. I started laughing. I was like, Lord, you're funny. So basically, the Lord was telling me you need to exercise the fruit of the spirit. You need to be patient, have self-control. You need to peace be still. OK, you need to be gentle. You need to have joy. So he answered my prayer. And the fact that like the Lord spoke to me like that instant peace. Like that, I could stand on that solid ground that God has spoken. He has answered my prayers. He has spoken. And I know it's him. And I fell back on his word. Um, and sometimes in conversations with friends or family, it's, they, would, they would say something and it would just hit differently because it's just like, like the Holy Spirit just clicks that light bulb, like, remember that type of thing. So God will speak to us through people. My mom told me about this scripture that says the voice of God is the voice of men. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't seen that scripture yet. I'm going to look it up. Um, but yeah, God speaks through people. And another way that the Lord can speak to us is through like visions and dreams. Sometimes you will see like images in your mind or like a flash of something in your mind. Maybe when you're praying or when you're like talking to God, you see like an image or a flash of something in mind. And that's him. Either he's trying to show you something or tell you something to come, or show you something, or he's answering your prayer in that way. So God speaks to us through those means. And I'm not going to get too much into this, but that is why it's so important to beware what you allow into your gates. Your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, what you touch. You got to be beware of that because, again, we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. We exist on this world because we have a body. But when we're saying, God, let your will be done, God uses people to do his will. He said, go and make disciples of every nation, of every tribe, of every tongue. Why? Because God, to, to do things on this earth, you have to have a body. 
And the enemy is also aware of that. So to do his bidding, he also uses people. And he gets information to people through media, through situations, through different things. And um, that's why I said it's important to guard your gates so that you won't have too many voices in your mind. Like you got to be aware of what you're listening to because it affects you inside and it can begin to manifest in the physical, especially when it comes to dreams. God speaks to us through dreams and like what you watch before you go to sleep or listen to before you go to sleep or how the day goes before you go to sleep can manifest in your dreams. Because again, we are spirit. Our spirit is not asleep when we're sleeping. It's just this body that's resting. So when you're sleeping, like your spirit is still active. And you, that's why you're able to get dreams. Again, when it comes to dreams, y'all go read Stephanie's book or go listen to it on Spotify audio or audiobooks or Audible. Go listen to it because she goes so in-depth about it. But so many factors play, ha- come to play in dreams. I mean, what people are wearing, the colors around you, the tone of the dream, you know, the, th- the setting of the dream, all those things come into play. But again, I want to take it back to the basics. The dreams you have when you wake up, pay attention to what, how you're feeling. When you wake up, pay attention to what happened in the dream. When God is speaking to you through your dream, it will not go against his nature. It will not go against his nature. And when you have your dream, you're not sure. I grew up African, so we were thought to- we to- any bad dream, just wake up and start casting and binding, bind and cast and cancel. And I'm not going to lie, I still do that today because I can't be so I can't be too sure. I'm like, I cancel everything in the name of just like, I'm not playing no games, okay? But a good practice is asking God, Lord, what, what did this dream mean? What did this dream signify? What does it imply? And you got to spend time with him and then he'll reveal to you, you know, what the dream means. So um, God speaks to us through dreams. So when God speaks... So these are the different ways that God speaks to us. He speaks to us through his word, through dreams, through a um, voice in our, mi- in our mind, audibly, through people, through pictures and images, and honestly, through music as well. I guess that's also like words, but through music, he speaks to us. Um, and through like words and even like, just seeing things sometimes you god just speaks to you it's important to be able to hear god's voice and discern his voice clearly because it will determine how your life is steered and that's why i said it's so important to guard your gates because whatever you let in is what will come out and um the lord says that our body is the temple of the holy spirit your body is the temple of the holy spirit how would you treat your body that's the temple of the holy spirit would you let rubbish into your temple we see jesus in the bible literally cleanse the physical temple because there was buyers and sellers in there corrupting the temple and that made jesus angry which means that when you're walking with god you cannot mix god and mix other things like you cannot have other things on the throne in your heart and try to have god be the king of your heart no it can't work it says jesus wants to be your lord and savior So that means that you got to filter what you watch. You got to filter what you hear. You got to filter what kind of conversations you have because it affects you and it affects how you hear God speak. Sometimes there's barriers in in being able to hear God's voice and discern his voice. And one of those barriers is pride. Pride leaves no room for God because pride is all about self. Pride only hears self. Pride is all about me, how I can do this, what I can do, what I think is the way, what I think should happen. Pride is literally taking your life into your own hands and saying that I got it, God. I got it. Don't worry, I got it. Don't worry, I got it. That is what pride does. And, you know, God emphasizes that. He says he opposes the proud, but he lifts up the humble. God does not like pride. And if that's something you struggle with, you got to ask him to help you. And really work through it with him because pride really like it it prevents you from hearing God. It really does prevent you from hearing God. Another one is fear. And what I learned is that fear is the opposite of faith. I mentioned this in the last video that the scripture that says we have not received the spirit of fear, but of love, of power and a sound mind. And all those things, love, power and a sound, sound mind encompasses spirit, soul and body. And fear 
when fear comes into the mix, it just messes things up with your spirit, your soul, and your body. When fear comes into play, fear attacks your faith. You know, there was a time where I was struggling with fear and I still got to be cautious of it. And I just kind of like imagine like faith just walking and all happy and then fear just coming up and literally trying to drag faith back. As faith is trying to move forward, fear is trying to drag faith back. And that is exactly what fear does is to kill faith. And faith is what we need. What Jesus talked about the most is just believe in me. Just believe in me. Just believe in me. In other words, just have faith. Just have faith in me. Have faith in me. So fear comes to kill faith that, you know, and it can show in the form of like you're praying and you're trying to talk to God. And then fear starts telling you that, oh, is God really hearing you? Oh, will God really answer? That little thought, as little as it is, can be destructive. Because keep getting little, little of those thoughts, it starts to build strongholds in your mind and it becomes impossible to believe God for things that he's more than capable of doing. It becomes impossible to hear, you know, his voice sometimes because fear is just so loud. So when it comes to fear, when it comes to pride, an antidote of that is the scripture that says, take every lofty, every high thought captive that tries to raise up itself against the name of the Lord, take it captive down to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Put it down to the obedience of Jesus Christ. There's a scripture for everything. That's why you got to be in your word. You got to be biblically literate, being your word, especially during these times, being your word, I believe is the verse of the day. Uh, it was a verse of the day yesterday, but literally take every prideful thought, every doubtful thought every fearful thought down to the obedience of jesus christ let the word supersede those thoughts let the word raise a standard against those thoughts because those thoughts will do absolutely nothing but diminish your faith and we're supposed to grow from faith to faith as believers and i want to just end this by simplifying that christianity is not a religion you don't have to jump through hoops to hear god's voice you don't have to jump through hoops to have a relationship with God. The only thing the Lord says is, if you love me, obey me and keep my commandments. And if it's hard to do that, that's why I say we got to go back to the word because the word talks about God. It points to Jesus. We get to know the nature and the character of God when we read his word. And I want to, again, encourage you to approach God like you're approaching the best dad ever. Like you're approaching the person that knows the intimate part of you. The one that says he knows you, he informed you, he knitted you in your mother's womb. The one that says he knows the very hair on your head. The one that spoke to you before you were even born. You gotta go to him like that. And don't even let condemnation have one inch in your relationship with God. So, I hope this was helpful. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I love you all so much. And I pray that the Lord will begin to manifest himself in ways that you will not even be able to comprehend like the lord will just exceed your expectations i want to encourage you to have faith and wait on the lord expectantly i want you to be so aware of god's presence that his presence is everywhere like god is literally everywhere you have to be aware that his presence is everywhere so that he can freely speak to you in the ways that you wouldn't even expect it don't put God in a box. We are finite beings, but God is infinite. So we cannot put, we cannot use our mind to even contain God. We just got to let God be God. That's all we got to let God be God. Don't even try to, you know, wrap your mind around. Just let God be God and just fall into his arms. You can trust him. You can trust him. He said that anyone who wants to enter the kingdom must be like these little children. Look at little children, how they are with their parents. They rely on them. They trust them. They run into something that they don't know is danger because that is right behind them and he will catch them. And um, I know there's some things that can be a barrier to building a relationship with God. But again, I want to encourage you, go to God's word. Let him heal your soul if you're wounded. Let him show you who he is. And with all that being said, I love you guys so much. And I will see you guys next week, Thursday at 5 p.m. Bye, guys.